Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Martine's Musings podcast. I'm your host, Martine Felton, and today we have a guest by the name of Amanda Ferret, and she is a emotional wellness counselor and an EFT practitioner. And um, welcome, Amanda. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I hope I pronounced your last name right. I'm sorry. You did. Okay. Um, so how are you today? We were just talking a little bit behind the scenes about our days and what's been going on lately. So how are you today? Doing pretty good. You know, the sun is shining here in Portland, Oregon after mm -hmm. we had a rainy morning. So you can't complain when you get sunshine in Portland. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is very true. So tell us a little bit about yourself and um your background and how you got into the whole coaching and counseling um industry okay well i my undergrad is in family science and so i bounced around to a variety of things within either kind of family science work mental health work or social services um but was pretty heavy in mental health work um and once I moved out here to Portland, I decided I wanted to pursue my master's of social work at mm -hmm. Portland State University. So got into the program and started the program. It was continuing to work in mental health and social services. And whenever you know you start this big thing, life always likes to hand just stuff. And so I got through the first year of grad school and my dad who'd been battling cancer um, it became apparent that that battle was nearing an end. And so I took a break from school and went home and got to spend the last few weeks of my dad's life with him as he passed. And mm -hmm. then, you know, went back to school that next January. Um, it was only a few weeks and it was another phone call to come home because my grandpa was passing. So wow. came home with him and spent a week, his last week with him and then right back to school and finished up that term and, um, and then right before fall term started, I had to put down one of my emotional support animals who'd been with me for, um, over a decade. She was terminally ill and put her down on a Saturday, started school on that next Monday, and then got to almost the end of that term. And my grandma, um, she'd had a couple falls and just after Thanksgiving, it became apparent that she was failing and wasn't going to have much longer. Mm -hmm. So I packed up all my school stuff and finished my finals at her bedside and then stayed through Christmas break and went back that next January. So that was January of 2018 mm -hmm. and tried to go back to school and life kind of imploded. I wasn't taking good care of myself emotionally. I was doing all I could um, for my physical health, but your physical health doesn't matter when you aren't taking care of yourself emotionally because our bodies hold on to our emotions when we don't honor them. Yes. So I was just falling apart mentally, emotionally, physically, and life kind of imploded. And I needed to step back from grad school. And I stepped back and thought I was just going to take a break. And I realized, you know, grad school isn't what I want to do. This is no right. longer my path. Um, it didn't feel aligned anymore. A, it's super expensive, and B, it's a lot of work to then get licensed as a social worker, yeah. and you're usually held to standards, and I was like, you know, I don't do well playing by the rules, mm -hmm. um, because often in the world of social work, you don't get to actually do the things that really help people do the really big healing work. There's a lot of red tape sometimes in the way, yeah. or things that I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like right. And I just, I don't do well with that. Um, yeah. I have my dad's entrepreneurial spirit. I am, I joke that I'm not very good at being employable <laughs> or employed <laughs> because I think I was always meant to have my own path and be my own boss. Yeah. And so I had this big healing journey after, you know, I took a break from grad school. Things kind of got worse before they got better. And both physical health wise, mental health wise, and having worked in the field, I knew the signs and kind of did the work to get myself out of it. I started going to therapy, 
And I actually got myself a puppy who I was going to train as my service dog and started kind of getting out and about with him and doing those things and kind of getting myself going in the world again. And then um, he ended up being disabled. (laughs) He has kneecaps that pop out of place. So I had to retire him as a service animal, but he's still my emotional support animal. Yeah. And I was kind of like, okay, you know, just putzing through life. Thankfully I had gotten an inheritance. So I was able, you know, I was very privileged in that regard to kind of have Mm -hmm. the time and ability to take care of myself and kind of feel out what my next moves were. And I kept thinking like, gosh, you know, my, I was learning to accept the fact that I'd become disabled, that my physical health had Mm -hmm. gotten to a point where it's like, I don't think I could, even if I wanted to be employed, I don't think I could go back to a 40 hour a week job. Um, And now I've got this puppy, right. And I don't want to go to work without, you know, we've gotten used to each other. And um, (laughs) so I was like, what I, I, I want to be my own boss. What can I do? And again, life kind of showed me the way I, um, had a friend die by suicide last, well, it was two summers ago now. Mm-hmm. And I, he actually was my best friend's brother-in-law. So um, I went home to help support her and her family, um, and be there through that, be there through that loss with them and just kind of, you know, doing all the things, making the meals, helping with the, you know, he left mm-hmm. behind a daughter and nieces and nephews. And um, so helping with the kids and helping everybody cope and sitting and held, holding space for everybody right. um, in their grief and helping them navigate these, you know, feelings and these emotions. And, um, you know, I had experience with suicide. I grew up in a family that was impacted by suicide. My uncle Randy had committed suicide before I was even born. Okay. And so suicide had been something I learned about growing up yeah. because my yeah. dad sat us down and talked to us. And so I got home from being back in Montana for all of that. And I was like, you know, I've had it pointed out to me that I'm really good at grief, even though that's not something you want to be good at because you've gotten good at it because you've experienced it so much. Right. And I have a background in mental health and family science and like all these things. So what can I do to take all my lived experience, my education, right? Cause I, I put some pretty money and energy into that education, yes. right? Like, so what, how can I put all this together? And I sat down with a friend of mine who was a business coach and we kind of tossed a few ideas around and I landed on being an emotional support coach and grief support coach. Mm-hmm. And then COVID hit and it was a perfect opportunity for me to everything moved to online. Yeah, And I love to sign up for all the things. And so I learned of um, all these different programs and I was kind of looking into all these different things. How can I continue to learn and grow and even improve myself as a practitioner? And I found the counseling certification program through Cornell. Mm -hmm. So signed up for that. And then I happened upon a live video of a coach of mine that I knew. And she had invited on Jackie McDonald's to do some tapping and I logged on right as they were about to start tapping and I started following along and the tears just started flowing. Wow. And it started to unlock all this stuff. And I felt this weight kind of lift off and this transformation just started to happen. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was like, what is this magic? (laughs) I need this in my life. This is magic. This is what I need for my final rep. Like this is what I need for my own healing and growth. Because I tried to, you know, I'd done talk therapy, I'd done hypnotherapy, I'd done EMDR, I'd done all these things, and I was doing much better, and there was still something missing. And to have this, like, you know, it was a very generic tapping session. It wasn't on anything, you know, that I was feeling in that moment, but it hit my nerve in my subconscious. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is what I need for me, and this is what I want to do with others. Like, right. I, I want this in my life. So, of course, she was having a a 40 challenge and that launched into her having her program. And I was like, here's my credit card, sign me up. Like, mm-hmm. yes, please. And now I am certified in her, the basic uh, McDonald manifestation method. And mm-hmm. I'm about to finish the advanced um, because the magic and power of EFT tapping 
is totally what I was meant to do. I now say that I'm a very proud grad school dropout because I found my <laughs> life's path. And I love combining the emotional wellness counseling with the tapping because what it allows me to do is kind of do tapping with folks, but then take it a next step. So I can give people kind of homework, so to speak, mm -hmm. of other tools and tricks to take that tapping and the work we're doing with the tapping and whatever the subconscious brings up even mm -hmm. further so that they can do greater healing and greater growing. Yeah, I can totally see how you, just by you telling me your story, because you have, you there is a pattern of you being a support system, support for other people. So I could totally see you in this capacity in um, being a, a EFT practitioner, you know, being a counselor, being a coach. Yeah, it it was there for you. It was laid out there for you, but you probably weren't, you know what I mean? Seeing right. the yeah. well, just I wasn't finding the right modality, right? It was like, yeah, you know, getting exactly. that LCSW doesn't sound quite right. Cause then I have mm -hmm. to, you know, apply, I have to, comply to the NASW and all the rules of whatever agency I'm working for. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of hours to get your licensure and a lot of work. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, I don't want to jump through all those hoops. And so, you know, 2020 was a great year for me to kind of be like, okay, let's explore, like, let's see what else is out there. Let's find mm -hmm. that right modality. Cause coach, the title coach didn't quite feel right for me either. And so counselor, you know, that feels good. That worked. Yeah. And I loved the certification I got from Cornell. Um, mm -hmm. And it brought all my grad school knowledge back as well. It re, because when I left grad school, I left in trauma and trauma brain likes mm -hmm. to tuck everything away because it's doing its job of keeping you safe. Yep. Even if that it's stuff that you, you know, a good old, you know. And it's like, it's grad school. Like grad school wasn't the trauma. Everything else was the trauma. Like I need that knowledge. I paid good money. Bring that back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, now I've got that all back at the forefront and I'm like, yeah, that's right. I was trained in motivational interviewing and I was trained in cognitive behavioral therapy and I, I was trained in all these really great, amazing tools that I can use with people. You know, I just, I'm not a therapist. I'm not licensed. I can't diagnose. I can't bill insurance. I can't do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But I can still use these modalities and these tools to help people. And then EFT has been that final beautiful pathway and piece of just like, oh my gosh, this is the tool. And there's science out there and research out there that shows that its effects are just as powerful, if not more powerful than CBT and last longer than cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm. So it's like, yes, please let me use a tool that is even more amazing Right. than the kind of therapeutic standard that is out there. So what exactly is EFT tapping for those who don't know what it is exactly? So it stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, mm -hmm. and it's a combination of Eastern and Western practices. So the Eastern part of the practices are that you're literally tapping on acupressure meridians on your body. Right. And what that does is it starts to calm the limbic system, the sympathetic nervous system and your mm -hmm. amygdala and your brain, which is responsible for fight or flight. And so those things are all the things that pump cortisol and all those stress hormones and like get yeah. us ready to like survive, right? We go back to primal brain. Right. And so as we calm those things down, we can activate our parasympathetic nervous system. We can access our subconscious and higher parts of our brain and our thinking, and we enter a rest and repose state. And what happens then is in comes the Western philosophy part of this, where mm -hmm. we start to use talk therapy. And as a practitioner, I ask my clients questions and kind of understand how they're feeling, how long they've been feeling that way. Maybe there's events or memories that trigger this feeling or solidify an old belief or thought pattern. And we start to dig in and explore those things. And as you enter that rest and repose state, and I reflect language back to you and we go through and we say things as we're tapping, the mm -hmm. subconscious is able to be like, no, this is actually what I feel. No, it happened because that one time in junior high, such and such happened. Mm -hmm. And so the subconscious is able to kind of bring things up that we then can explore and start to rewire the perspective, do some healing, kind of untangle and reframe the emotions around mm -hmm. those thought patterns, memories, beliefs, events. 
And what's happening in the advanced program that I'm in is I'm learning parts of self-work. So I can go back and rework um, emotions around childhood memories and traumas, mm -hmm. um, as well as more recent. So I like to say that when I work with folks, I am helping them heal their past, right. fall in love with their present, and get excited about their future. Because in the McDonald Manifestation Method, which I'm trained in, mm -hmm. we actually also bring in visualizations and other tools to help you clear blocks and be receptive for manifesting the future of your dreams. Right. So right. I get to go back and help people heal their past and make peace with their past. I help them fall in love with their present and get control of their emotional well-being and freedom in the present mm -hmm. and help them get ready and able to build the future of their dreams. It's That's really amazing. amazing. That is amazing. All through tapping. And yes. that is, so tell me about your group. I really love the title of your group. Um, Badass Women Breaking Barriers. I joined your group yes. on Facebook. Because <laughs> I've kind of neglected it as of late, but my mom was here for two weeks and it's been a bit hectic. But um, I started it because I, I'm wearing a shirt that says always speak your truth, right? I right. am a woman that I've had to, I've always known when things didn't align or when things didn't work for me, but I didn't always have the ability to like, speak up or take a stand, or I would speak up and take a stand and would immediately get shut down. Mm -hmm. And that's just never sat well with me. And I've always kind of been the black sheep. And I've always kind of been the one that's like, you know, not afraid to stand out and do my own thing. And, um, and it's coming from Montana that there, you know, there's been interesting moments <laughs> in my life. Um, and I'm just like, you know what, I want to create a space I'm part of a ton of different beautiful communities, but I wanted to create a space where I could be 100% myself 100% of the time because I'm a fat, disabled woman with mental and chronic illnesses. And I am a social justice activist and doing the best I can with my anti-racism work. And I just wanted a space where I could kind of put all of that and throw in some tapping and just right. let women show up. 100% themselves 100% of the time yeah. where we can celebrate each other, support each other, build each other up and talk about what it means to be a woman and break through the barriers, the barriers that we put on ourselves. Yeah. The barriers that society places on us, the barriers that sometimes our families or, you know, well-meaning, well-intended people we love put on us. Mm -hmm. Um and just kind of break that down and break through and truly be the women we want to be. Mm -hmm. and not have any of those barriers holding us back that we can use our voices that we can step into our power that we can live authentically and 100 percent visibly as ourselves and that's my hope for the group and i want it to be a co-created space where i'm not the only one kind of in there i want people to feel free to come in and kind of share and we can all learn and grow together right um mm -hmm. So it's a fairly new group, but it's growing and I've got some things in the works to help it keep growing. That's good. So <laughs> I'm excited about what's to come. So what would you think, how, what would you, one of the things that you would say that you've gone through that you've sort of broken a barrier or, you know, something intense in your life, you know, like when you say that, you know, life imploded for you a couple of times back when you were trying to find your way, what particular thing imploded for you that helped you to break free and, and be who you are right now and be so confident and be so clear about, you know, the things that you want to do and how you want to do them? You know, I grew, I grew up in a ranching family. Uh, my grandpa was a rancher. My mm -hmm. grandma was a ranch wife, my mom on my dad's side and on my mom's side, they were farmers, you know, so the, the husbands went out and worked all day outside. The wives were the dutiful wives inside doing the housework and the meals and the kids and the grandkids and all of that. And I watched my parents do things slightly differently. And then my brother was slated to take over the family ranch. And I was supposed to be, um, cause I was good in school, right? I, mm -hmm. I had the smarts, so to speak. And I loved animals. So I was supposed to be a veterinarian. Mm. So when I started my undergrad, I started in biology. And this is one of the first times of me like pushing back and breaking a barrier was I went and changed my major and then told my family. 
okay. And my grandpa said to me, well, who's going to be the doctor in the family now? And I just remember, it's like, well, gosh, do I have value in this family, even if I'm not a doctor? Right. Like, I'm still going to college. I'm mm -hmm. still the first one in our family to go straight through high school and go through college. Because mm -hmm. my mom had started college and then stopped to marry my dad and have a family. And then she went back and finished college later as us kids were half grown. Right. And so it's like, you know, don't I still have value and worth as a, like, I'm still in school. And so that kind of became my pattern in life was like, do what I need to do for me to be in alignment with me and then beg for forgiveness, right? Or defend myself. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, especially now, like I'm over 40. Yeah. I'm you not asking. I am not begging for forgiveness. I get to live my life. And especially losing my dad. My dad died at 62. Mm -hmm. And I watched him fight with that. You know, he had that entrepreneurial spirit and he tried really hard um, to have a couple different businesses and he had his shop in Townsend when I was a little kid and then again in Billings and things just kind of kept happening right as life does right. and then he did find a great job like his last job was a security officer at Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman Montana mm -hmm. and he loved that job and it was a great job for him to have actually as he battled cancer because good health benefits and a good they were like a family, the, his right. fellow employees, and they took very good care of him. So it was great to see him do that. But I knew like, you know, I watched this kind of spirit in my dad of like wanting these, that independence and that, that, you know, he wanted that freedom. He wanted right. that freedom. But he, he had, him. and he pushed back from his parents, right? Cause he wasn't the one that was going to take over the ranch and, you know, thank God my brother came along. Right. And he was groomed mm -hmm. to take over the ranch and now he does have the ranch, but um, you know, I watched my dad not get to do some of the things that I think he would have wanted to do. Right. And same with my mom. And I'm like, I don't want that because we don't know when our number is going to be called. We don't mm -hmm. know when we will leave this earth. And having always worked in some sort of, you know, I was a babysitter from age 12 on. I also, you know, was the big sister. Mm -hmm. So I'd always been a caregiver of some sort. And I was just like, I want to leave a ripple in the pond. I want to leave some sort of legacy where I've helped people and done good. And, but I want to do it my way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want a boss or an agency or some bureaucracy telling me how, what that looks like. Yeah. Um, and so I've just really, yeah, I pushed back and realizing in the last couple of months that I am finally on the right path, my path, a path I chose, a path I'm blazing for myself. Mm -hmm. And that just feels really good because I can go back to that, you know, changing my major or I really struggled when I decided to take a break from school and take some time off because my brother, of course, his pushback was, you have to be a productive member of society. And it's like, so what does that mean to you? Well, yeah, like, what does that mean? Because I was starting to recognize that like, hey, my body can't do what it used to do as well, right? So there was some, and it's like, not only do I need to take time to emotionally heal, I've got now, like, I have to navigate the world very different physically. So I need you as my brother to kind of understand, you know, and I'm not going to just sit on my couch and be lazy but product productivity can look very different. Yeah. You were given the ranch. So productivity mm -hmm. for you means up very early and work hard all day because you've got cattle and land and things to take care of. And that was your path. Mm -hmm. And if at any point you don't want that to be your path, like, let me know and we can make a decision about the ranch. Like, I'm not going to stand in your way. Mm hmm I'd also like it if you don't stand in mine. Like I need now at almost, you know, at 40 years old to mm -hmm. get to live my life. And, you know, I haven't had a chat with my brother and I don't know if he listens to any of these podcasts that I'm on, I, but <laughs> I have no idea what he thinks of his sister. That's now an emotional wellness counselor and EFT practitioner, you know, surrounded mm -hmm. by my crystals and my, you know, all my woo and, you know, nonsense that I'm sure, yeah. but I'm happy. I'm happy yeah. and I'm helping people and that's what matters. That's yeah, that's awesome. That's wonderful. And I really, I really like your mindset when it comes to that, because a lot of us 
a lot of us could use, can, you know, do well from that type of mindset because we get to a place in life when you get to a certain age where you've done everything that you were supposed to do in the eyes of your family, in the eyes of your friends. And you get to that place and you're like, you know, this is not even what I wanted to do. How did I even get here? And so then you make that decision to live your life on your terms. And I love that. I love that. Right. And I don't want a life full of regrets or resentment yeah. at all. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, and yeah. I just, I, you know, that's part of why I joined my, or started my group is I want to help other women right. so that when they get to 40, they aren't, why am I angry all the time? Why do I resent my husband or my kids or my family <laughs> or my job or, mm -hmm. You know, I don't want anybody to live that way. Yeah. So everybody needs their thing. Everybody needs their thing to kind of release that energy that they have, that energy that they have where, you know, that needs to come out. Yeah. Totally. Um, I would love um to do a EFT tapping demo a little demonstration if that's okay with you. And I could maybe yeah. follow along. Yes. Yeah. So What's an emotion that you're feeling right now? Um, an emotion that I'm feeling right now is stress would be an emotion. Okay. Yeah. Where is that stress in your body? That stress in my body is a lot in my stomach. Okay. And on a scale of zero to 10, how intense is that stress in your stomach? Um, and being most intense. Yeah. Um, I would say about a five or a six. Okay. So I do what I'm going to do. I do get migraines sometimes too as well, okay. which I know is part of my stress, my stresses. Okay. So how would you like to feel instead of stressed? I would like to feel free, like okay. not having to worry about things, you know, like money and, you know, where I'm living and things like that. Okay. So I'm going to start tapping on the side of my hand and you can follow along and do the same. Like and this? then I'll prompt. Mm -hmm. And so I'll say something and then I'll stop and I'll have you repeat what I said. Okay. And then I'll prompt us and we'll just move through the points on the body and we'll okay. just keep doing that. So it's kind of like Simon says, so I'll say something and then I'll stop and you'll repeat it and we'll just keep going. Okay. All right. Even though I'm stressed. Even though I'm stressed. When I feel it in my stomach. When I feel it in my stomach. I love and accept myself fully. I love and accept myself fully. Even though I get really stressed. Even though I get really stressed. When I feel it really intensely in my stomach. And I feel it really intensely in my stomach. And I wish I didn't have to worry about all these things. And I wish I didn't have to worry about all of these things. I love and accept myself fully. I love and accept myself fully. Even though I get stressed. Even though I get stressed. I'm ready to let that go. I'm ready to let that go. And feel free instead. And feel free instead. And not have to worry. And not have to worry. Top of the head. I feel stressed. I feel stressed. Okay, eyebrow points kind of right above the eyebrows. Okay. I feel the stress in my stomach. I feel the stress in my stomach. Side of the eye, so kind of right on the side here. I feel the stress in my stomach. I feel the stress in my stomach. Under the eye. I'm ready to let this stress go. I'm ready to let this stress go. Under the nose. The stress that I feel in my stomach. The stress that I feel in my stomach. Under the chin or on the chin. I'm ready to welcome in free. I'm ready to welcome in free. Feeling collarbone point. I'm ready to welcome in not worrying. I'm ready to welcome in not worrying. And then wrist point. I'm ready to let, I know it's hard when you've got bracelets on. I'm ready to let go of all the stress. 
I'm ready to let go of all the stress. And then back to the top of the head. And welcome in freedom and calm instead. And welcome in freedom and calm instead. Top of the eye. Sometimes I worry about lots of things. Sometimes I worry about lots of things. Side of the eye. And I wonder what it would take to let go of these worries. And I wonder what it would take to let go of these worries. Under the eye. I'm ready to let go of them now. I'm ready to let go of them now. Under the nose. And welcome in a sense of freedom. And welcome in a sense of freedom. Chin. And welcome in calm and peace. And welcome in calm and peace. I let go of all my worries now. I let go of all my worries now. Wrist point. And I welcome in calm, peace, and freedom. And I welcome in calm, peace, and freedom. I'll have you take a nice big deep breath. How does that feel now? That feels good. I felt energy um, leaving, like, starting from like my solar plexus going down to my root. I really felt like really through my toes. Yeah. So that's a really quick setup session. Normally I'd ask a few more questions. Mm -hmm. um, and since you gave it a rating of like a five or a six, that yeah. meant I started to introduce language of possibility. But if somebody was like at an eight, nine or 10, yes. we'd do a round where they just got to vent it out. Where right. it was just recognizing that negative. Like I'm really angry. I'm, feel hot. I feel it in my stomach. I feel it mm -hmm. in my face. So based on kind of how intense the emotion or feeling that somebody's feeling is, that's kind of where we start. Wow. And since you were between a four and a seven, I started to bring in that, like, I want to feel free. I want to feel calm. I want to feel peace instead. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's amazing how you'll feel energy shift and what can sometimes I, happen I for people. It. I literally yeah. felt it. Wow. And, and sometimes what might happen too, is the subconscious might say, you know what, you're not stressed. There was this thing that happened and you might go back up, right? So it's mm -hmm. not exactly linear. And that's the beauty of it is you can follow the emotions that come up or the memories that come up. Mm -hmm. So that's how the work gets done. And like the reframing and the healing start to happen is because we're honoring whatever our subconscious tells us needs that attention. So what that um, tapping like that, would you recommend because i do i meditate regularly mm -hmm. and would you say um during meditation is a good time to tap for tapping as well so what you could do during meditation is you could finger tap so okay. you're literally taking like two fingers from one hand and tapping along the side of your other fingers on your other hand mm -hmm. alongside the nail bed on the side of the finger okay and you could do this while talking so you could be saying things to yourself, or you could just do it while meditating and it's going to help you enter that rest and repose state. Okay. You could do it if you're in, I did that. I was in traffic one day and I was starting to get stressed. I, and I noticed I took one hand off the wheel and started tapping with my thumb on my other fingers. Right. right. Because it's just an automatic response now that mm -hmm. I start. And so, um, yeah, and there are people that use it as a daily practice that get up every morning, kind of check in with themselves, see where they're at and do a daily mm -hmm. tapping. Um, I haven't quite gotten there yet, mostly because I have animals and they predict or determine what my mornings look like. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no there's no consistency in our mornings at this household, especially with my chronic illnesses and stuff, right? Every day is different. Um, but yeah, finger tapping would be great to use um, with meditating. Okay. Or if you are meditating and you have an emotion come up, either doing the finger tapping or tapping on the tapping points and be like, I feel my anxiety coming up. I feel my anxiety. It's in my stomach. I'm so anxious right now. Mm -hmm. I wonder where this anxiety is coming from. I'd like to let this anxiety go, right? So you can just, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm actually coaching and helping with Jackie McDonald's next round. And a lot of the folks are so nervous. They want to, these new practitioners that are learning, they want to get the language perfect right away. Mm -hmm, right. And it's like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be messy as long as you're using your client's language or your language and your body will tell you, your subconscious will tell you, no, that didn't land well. Like it's mm -hmm. more this, right? <laughs> and so yeah, um, if you want if you wanted to work on like self love, where would be the ideal place to tap? Like, would that, is it certain meridians that you have to tap? So, to? 
my favorite, if you don't want to do all the or learn all the tapping points, the two points I recommend that you can try are mm -hmm. under the nose. So okay. literally just between the bottom of your nose and the top of your upper lip mm -hmm. and on your chin between your bottom of your lip and the bottom of your chin, because okay. those two points, one is the central vesicle vessel and one is the governing vessel. So one literally is a tapping point that runs down your spine. And one is your tapping point that runs down the front of you. So okay. if you go between those two points, if you can't do anything else but those two points, you're literally full body engaging everything because you're getting the central and governing vessel and it becomes a full body experience in that. Oh, also wow. the wrist point, the wrist point is your lung meridian. So if you could do nose, chin and wrist, you'd mm -hmm. literally be getting head to toe, front and back and your arms. Wow. Okay. That's really great information. Thank you for joining me. And what I usually, um, when I wrap up my guests, I usually ask them because I'm, I'm, I'm a coach too. I'm a new coach and I like to focus on self-love, the self-love mindset and self-care. And I was wondering what are some, uh, if any, uh, what are some of your self-care practices that you would like to share with us? How I, I have pets, so they're a part of my self-care. Right. Setting boundaries. Yeah. And I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't I didn't uphold them as well with my mom while she was visiting as I and I'm paying the price now <laughs> in having to do other self-care and take care of myself physically. Yeah. Um and I splurged on a hot tub because with my chronic illnesses, part of chronic pain is part of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know not everybody can do that. But mm -hmm. finding something, right? Like, um, and I always say self-care is also just basic adulting. So mm -hmm. if you got up and got dressed today and that was all you could do, good for you. Mm -hmm. If you got up and you made a meal or ordered a, a good meal and that was all you could do, good for you. Like learning to be okay, right? We are in such a, we are in a society that is so driven by capitalism and productivity and like yeah. do more, do more, do more. I love the nap ministry. I follow them on social media. Like rest is a revolutionary act. So take those naps, sleep in, do what you can to take care of yourself. I am all mm -hmm. about like pushing back against those capitalistic norms of like, yes. you must do, do, do. It's like, no, I'm, I'm going to go take a nap. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like work, work, work until you're like I 70 am. and then live a few years and then you pass on because you've worked so long that you don't know what else to do with your life. Yeah, so this has been really, really great. Thank you so much, Amanda, for your, you know, your inspiration and your knowledge and the EFT tapping demonstration, you know, mostly. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, being a um, and going along. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, all, I'm, there. <laughs> I'm into I'm into it. I'm into all things. Um, I'm willing to try all the things, really. Um, any modalities. Um, I'm I'm really into sound healing, and I really want to get to learn. I have uh, I recently got a a, um, a crystal singing bowl as a gift. Ooh. So it's um, pitched for the heart chakra. Oh, lovely! Yeah, so it's really loud. Um, so I'm gonna start trying to learn how to do that and um, Very cool. do sound healing for myself and maybe for others too as well you yeah know? that's another it's a modality that i know people that do and i've i've been eyeing some singing holes but i'm like i i've i've splurged in my crystal collection and i'm like let's <laughs> just let's use those for a while and yeah. then then we'll take the next step but yeah. yeah i've got i've got you know my amethyst double point my <laughs> rose quartz. I've got all sorts of my, my fun crystals that I use in my, my sessions. Yes, so do I, so do I, but crystal singing bowls are a splurge and oh, there's yes, usually a, uh, um, a complete set is seven. And I'm like, Whoa, that's a lot of money. Like, <laughs> can we just buy three? Them and they're so delicate. Yes. And yeah. This one came packed so tightly. It was really packed um, nicely. So I was really impressed with the, with the packaging. So anyway, thank you again for joining me. Thank you thank everyone you. for watching and listening. And um, 
yeah, so I'll be back with another episode of Martine's Musings and everyone take care. Bye.